Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. We got some special guests joining us today. We got Yo Gotti and Big also Gotti. the producer uh, Young it's D. Sandy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How's it feeling? How you feeling, Gotti? I'm good. Man. You just went on a tour for your birthday, man. man. Oh yeah. I like you know I like traveling now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you enjoy it now? You just yeah. said now, just now. Thing. Yeah, you know I ain't used to travel a lot because I don't really like planes like that. Mm -hmm. So I was like late to like going overseas and mm -hmm. stuff like that because I ain't like to be on the planes for a long time. So you was missing out on mad money then. Yeah, just off shows and everything. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's it's so every time we we have Gotti up here, I just love the first interview of Gotti where. Gotti, we had Gotti for 30 minutes. He might have said five words, and now Gotti is opened up. He's traveling. <laughs> He's just a CEO. I just love to see the transformation of, of, of Gotti. So how's yeah. it been being CEO? Less music. I know you got a mixtape out now, but really Hard developing your, your, yeah. your acts. Hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, shout out to Young D, man. So he executive produced that joint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh -oh. how's it been developing those acts opposed to diving into the music as much as you were before? I mean, I think I got the same passion for both. You know what I mean? I always had it from the beginning. I just knew like, you know, it's, it's a time for everything. I had to get to a certain point mm -hmm. and the artistry point to, to, you know what I'm saying, to go to the executive. But I think it's the same satisfaction for me, you know what I'm saying, like seeing an artist win that I work with, it's like, I get the same like validation of seeing myself. I think that's why I'm so like passionate about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's so into it, into the details of, of uh, an artist I work with. It's, it's just like if it was myself, I'm like selfless when it comes to that, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I see us as the same. How, how do you know when it's time to take the executive jacket off and get back in the trenches as an artist? Like, how did you know this was time to do I Showed You Show? Uh, it's just energy. I go off energy. I'm still like a, a fan of music at mm -hmm. the same time, so mm -hmm. when I'm listening to music, I can hear when I feel like something is missing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I feel like I can, you know, try to deliver it, I try it, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, uh and I feel like to me, like, like this mixtape to me is like outside music. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like a lot of the music like laid back in your feelings and mm -hmm. get high music or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. I feel like it's a um, hustle music is kind of like missing, you know, so what I do, what Jeezy do, what, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. in that well, era, I feel like real. ain't no like get money music. Mm -hmm. You feel mm -hmm. me? Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, we need some get money music. I, I, I can feel it with this one. Yeah. I was gonna say, what made you go back to the elements of the mixtape? Because you could have did an album, it could have did an EP, but you decided to to link up with with uh, drama and do a gangster grill version. When I think about that whole get money era, that that's where it took me back to. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's that whole era. I'm like, you make it fun, like it ain't that serious, really for me at this point. Like I want to make like like it ain't number ten songs on here. So that this like the, minutes. It, this like yeah. the shortest project I ever put out since mm -hmm. I've been doing music. So it ain't about like. You know, putting a lot of tracks on other tracks. You know why? You know the tricks of the game. Mm -hmm, and shit. Mm -hmm, but, uh, mm -hmm. It was just about making it like an art piece. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ten songs, only the right ten songs. Not nothing that's just filling in. Like if we felt like it went hard, don't put it on there. So if we felt like we had number eight hard song, we'd only put eight. Mm -hmm. You know. You said on the project that you're not doing no more albums. Yeah, just mixtapes takes from here on out because you don't yeah. care about the charts. You, you yeah. really feel that way? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Why you don't got no? Clearly, you don't have no more uh, album obligations then. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm a hundred percent independent. Wow. Yeah. So why, why, why not do an album? You just too much pressure? Or? No, I, I just think like I think that's a mental thing too, mm -hmm. though. For me too, it's like when I say I'm doing a mixtape, I don't know. It's just like I'm in a different mind state mm -hmm. when I say I'm doing an album. Mm -hmm. You know, most time when I do a mixtape, I don't spend a lot of time on it. Mm -hmm. Like I may do it in a week. You know what I'm saying? Ten days, nine days, mm -hmm. something like that. You know, you may be working on your album for six months, mm -hmm. eight months, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like going back and forth. So I think it's kind of like, you know, when I came up in the mixtape era, mixtape was almost like practice. Mm -hmm. It was like, man, I'm going to do this before the album. Mm -hmm. Like it's kind of like the warm setup, up. Yeah. yeah, this is a warm up before the album, mm -hmm. but they always be special. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's kind of like what I'm on. You feel any pressure with, you know, with, with, with you so many artists, right? We just seen you. Glorilla's birthday, you bought her a Maybach truck, right? Yeah. So now, do you have any pressure with every artist's birthday? Because you got a lot of artists now. Yeah. You got producers now. Now, do you got that pressure with every time an artist come out, you got to say, you got to spend a bag? Um, I mean, not really. You know what I mean? Because me, all me and my artists got special 
mm-hmm. you know, relationships and bonds, and we do so much for each other. You know, some of it is seen, some of it is not seen. Yeah. So everybody know I rock with them a thousand. What made you get Glorilla a, a Maybach truck? Was it, you know, the fact that she's been, you know, successful the last couple of months? She's been putting records on the chart. She's she's out of here. Yeah, and I and I like to see it. I like to see it. Like you know, what I'm saying Glow, Glow bought her first car, not too long ago. Like you know, it's crazy. Like the whole like probably a year run, she didn't even have a car. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not because she couldn't afford it. Of course she could buy a car, but she wasn't even like Glow. Mm-hmm. Really, she don't even really be on it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So um, I wanted to buy that type of car because she probably wouldn't even bought it. Gotcha. Glow stacking it, people. The internet, yeah. say, the internet say that's Glorilla money anyway. They say you just spend the money on her budget. Gotcha. I mean, I mean, no, not we don't have budgets, but uh, it's most definitely my money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so she's not gonna she's not gonna look at a statement later on and be like, no, 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 no. And if and if you know, I'm the type of person that like, we don't really have them type of issues. I'm the type mm-hmm. of person that like, we just don't have them type of issues. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's too mm-hmm. much paper. Mm-hmm. It's too much paper floating around to um, have money issues. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Another time yeah. you put it on uh, social media that um, I think it was a couple million dollars for any lawyer that can help you get four two out. Yeah, he's any, short too. Th- now, how, th- did did anybody call? Did anybody reach out? What's the process? What's going on with four yeah, two? Yeah, everybody reached out. You know what I'm saying? But they can't really do nothing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but Doug already, you know, we we rock with who Doug lawyer is. He good. Mm-hmm. He was good from the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Just. If we thought we can get him home earlier, we would have bust the move. You mm-hmm. said he's short, so you coming home soon? Yeah. How soon we know? Like 60 to 80 days or something like oh, that. Uh, oh, word, word, yeah. okay, okay. So before the end of the year. And, yeah. and Young mm-hmm. D did this whole project? Yeah, well, most of it, he executive produced it. He okay. produced most of the records, but he executive produced the whole project, mm-hmm. meaning like I work with him, like, mm-hmm. you know, even if I got to be from another producer mm-hmm. on, you know, the type of energy and tempos and, and stuff like that we was going at. Was it a lot of pressure, uh, D? It wasn't a lot of pressure. Okay. I'm just, I was just mixing my style with his style. Mm-hmm. Where you from, D? Jackson, Tennessee. Jackson, Tennessee. Yep. How y'all connect? On uh, what year that was? 2020. Yeah, you know, we found him. He was he was 14 years old. Okay. I was going to say, D look young. Wow. Yeah, he's 17. He was 16 or 17 now. 17. He's 17 now. When we met him, he was 14 on Instagram Live. What you mean on Instagram Live? You was on Live and he yeah, said, I'm going to produce beats? And he sent us some beats. And, uh, and it kind of rocked from there, like, and he sent Bag some beats. Yep. And then me and Bag were talking about him, like, you know the young, you number 14. And me and Bag actually collaborated and signed him together mm. when he was 14. What did your, what did your parents say when, when you have, cause most, most parents look at the rap game, the, the rap game is, is, nah, it's not gonna be, it's gonna take a long time, and you're not gonna be successful. So what did your parents say when both these platinum artists at the time said, I wanna sign you? They was happy. Mm. They believed in it from the jump. And they let you go they at- They let me do me. Really? Yep, all the way through. He used to travel with us, him and his dad to pull up to the studio. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was that young. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you had to have conversation with the parents just to let them know what the yeah. plan is. Yeah, you know, yeah. you had to, even when you're doing business at that young, the parents got to be involved and all that. But the, his dad was, you know, super supportive. Would travel with him to the yeah. studio sessions mm-hmm. and everything. And when we would cook up, we had these CMG sessions, mm-hmm. and he'd come to him where he cook up live in the studio. His dad would bring him down there. Man, one record you got on the album, man, with, with Money Bag, yo, mind my business. Yeah. I swear, man, that's how you feel. That's how everybody feel when they come from a certain environment. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you want to help, yeah. but sometimes you don't feel like your help is appreciated. Yeah. Then you don't really know what you can do. So sometimes you're just like, man, I'm just going to mind my business, yeah. pour you know, into my always, people. It always been me. Yeah. It's always been me. I think that's like one of the things the streets teach you in the beginning. Like, you know, like I call it just survival skills. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. a lot of people survive longer just staying out of people's business. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, just, man, just I don't hear nothing, I don't see nothing, I don't know nothing. Mm-hmm. I ain't even got no opinion on nothing. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It's gotta just, be there, just out, of, just out of the loop. But mm-hmm. then when you somebody like yourself who is a figure, you know what I mean, and, and, and come from the street, you probably can not change a lot of the next generation's lives or show them a better way. I think we, 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 put, we put in work to make changes where we can. It's, it's still a lot of stuff we do do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's a lot of stuff we do do that we do think is effective to to help. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, but I think that's a it's a it's a it's a land, right? It's mm-hmm. a land where you can do that and it's a land where like, you know what I mean, it's almost like um can be uh almost backfiring you or yeah. or you just or you need to just stay mad your business, you know what I'm saying? Like so I, f- I feel like Memphis, man, Memphis Memphis got everything to be that next 
hip hop hub, but for some reason it still feel like it ain't there yet, which is strange to me. Cause y'all got so much artists coming out of Memphis. What, what do you think the problem is? I think it's the hip hop hub. I think we created, we always had our sound. I mm-hmm. think people just got onto our sound late. You know, I think from a, I think he finally get the respect from a record label standpoint. All the A and R's and executives, mm-hmm. you know, look look for Memphis artists. Man, so many people call me about different Memphis artists. You know what I'm saying? They be knowing someone more than quicker than I do. Mm-hmm. That's how mm-hmm. that's how the microscope is on the city. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I'm proud of that because I think it's a lot of opportunity for a lot of people mm-hmm. that come out of there. I just mm-hmm. think that um, man, we just like. If it's just street, street, like yeah, you feel yeah, me. Yeah. So even with the opportunity, you know, I think most people just be street dudes more than they be artists. Mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm, what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it's more like, you know what I mean? Um, it's more like I had to do this at one point. I think you had to just accept that, man. I'm an artist now, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna put that to the side. Mm-hmm. You feel me? I think when more people do that, that's what probably you know. You know you know, you'll see the artistry turn into more of like really the industry mm-hmm. artists and then that'd probably be the answer. On the album you say you're still that, riding you know around with the pistol, the pistol and the Rolls Royce though. I mean, <laughs> you know. <what> you know? <laughs> 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 I mean, you know, we, we gotta survive. Yeah, mm-hmm. no point. I, I was gonna ask, with, with 50 years of, of hip hop being this week, you know, what got you into hip hop being a young hustler from Memphis? Like what made you say, this is where I wanna be? What made you fall in love with it? I mean, I, I was just a fan of it from the gate since a kid. You know what I'm saying? I, I remember mm-hmm. standing in front of the Flow Model TV, just looking at videos that was out, and I just always thought it was um, dope and fly. I just was, you know, a fan of hip hop from the beginning. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Before I even knew that I would be in it, I was a fan of it. And did you all, did you know that was going to be your way out of what you were doing, or it was nah, it just? No, I fun? actually didn't know. You know what I'm saying? Even when I first started rapping, I didn't believe that it was possible. It actually happened because coming from where I'm from, we didn't know anybody famous. We didn't know like nobody that had made it, like mm-hmm. from rapping, from being an NFL player, being an NBA player, a talk host. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We didn't know like anybody that made it. You know what I'm saying? Other than, you know, the dope boys from our neighborhood who mm-hmm. had fly cars and jewelry and the fila outfits and mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. so, you know, even when I was doing it, it was kinda like it was just something to do. I didn't really think that like it can really, you know what I'm saying, turn into what it didn't turn to. And you who made you, I who felt made like you think you could do it? Was it who made you think, believe you could do it? Was it three six or who was it? Uh well it started out being um started out being a dude that was named K C from my neighborhood. He mm-hmm. was a rapper. He was the only rapper in our neighborhood. Mm-hmm. He used to rap and we used to always just listen to him rap. Mm-hmm. And then he wrote my first rap for me. And I used to just recite the rap he wrote me until I started like putting my own words in it mm-hmm. into the exact same pattern. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um uh, so that was like the first person that made me like really want to be a, a rapper. Other than that, um, uh, Skinny Pimp. I see Eddie Skinny Pimp. Pimp riding through Memphis in the Drop Top 5.0. Mm-hmm. And that was like the first artist uh, I seen back in the day with the Mustang drop. You mm-hmm. feel me? Because I didn't really see 3-6 that much like physically see him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then when Project Pet came home, I started, right. yeah, Project Pet came home and um, he used to be like on our side of town, so I used to see Project Pat. Mm-hmm. Um, Ball and G? Uh, then Ball and G, but I'm saying like, I listen to Ball and G music and 3-6 music, but I'm saying like physically seeing yeah, it because I'm the type music. of person that like, if I don't see you, I don't really believe it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I really mm-hmm. like seeing this, mm-hmm. like you gotta be able to see it to believe it's possible. You know what I'm saying? So skinning him Project Pat is what I seen. What made you uh, stay the independent route? Because you know, most, when, when people wanna be a rapper, a lot of people's dreams is to sign to a major. They want to sign to a, a deal. Well, I did all of it. I did all of it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I was independent. I was signed. Back independent, signed. I mean, even right now, I'm doing all of it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I got a, you know, my label ain't independent 100%. We're in a partnership. You know what I'm saying? But me as an artist, it's independent. So, it's just, you know what I'm saying? It's, mm-hmm. You know, I don't think it's no, I don't think it's like no no big um, reward or no big thing to be independent. I think it's like, you had to do like what 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 makes sense for your business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I think being independent for me at this level in the game makes sense for me today. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cause like I ain't even, you know, I, I may drop a project whenever I feel like it. So mm-hmm. I may not need the same resources that a, a new artist may need. So mm-hmm. I think you gotta uh, align yourself with what you need for you to have the best shot to be the biggest artist in the world. 
if that's what you want to be. Now, you also said that, you know, you didn't see, you know, 8-Ball at MJG. You didn't see 3-6 uh, Mafia. When, when did you realize and be like, you know what? I got to move where people don't see me because a lot of people don't want what's best for me. Um, It took me a while to understand that. You know what I'm saying? And I think as an older I got, I understood them more. You know what I'm saying? Because. Oh, explain that. Yeah, you know, because like, like you just said, like I didn't understand when I was young why I didn't see them. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like yeah, I remember being in Memphis yeah, and they were telling yeah. me like, oh, sis, and I'm staying in LA. And I'm like, why the fuck them niggas move to LA? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you feel yeah, me? Yeah. Like, I'm like, I'm a, you feel Word. me? Like, I'm almost, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but now I get it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Like, but I ain't, when I was young, I ain't really, I ain't, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you know, like, I'm man enough to say that, like, you know, as I, you, you just change mindsets. You know what I'm saying? And you learn and you mature and you see things differently. You know what I'm saying? So, but when I was young, I most definitely was one of them, uh, you feel me? Like, <laughs> you know, probably like what the young guys is today. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I was, I, I used to think like that, and, and um, didn't understand some of the things. I want to talk about your, your pockets a little bit. You're what? part owner of an MLS team. How, a lot of how, money right there. A how did that come about? Did you ever have any like, well, maybe I should invest in DC this. United? Yeah, you said you said I ever have a. Did you ever? I, because back then, this is this is before. I mean, it, it's a soccer team. Yeah. Did you ever think to yourself, maybe I shouldn't invest in this? What made you say this is? I'm gonna put my money in this. I never thought I shouldn't invest in it. It was more so like, can I invest more? You know what I'm saying? I knew it was to play. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For multiple reasons. Like, you know, I do my research for one. Mm -hmm. I got the right business team around me. So we do all the right, you know, um, fact checking and, and making sure that the business is in the right standpoint. So that alone, on paper, it was the right business move. But my passion for uh, diversifying and, and growing and, and um, accomplishing different things as a hustler mm -hmm. also was uh, a big part of it. And then soccer was like the only sport my son ever played. So that's how I even know about I was gonna ask you, like, you didn't seem like you yeah. played soccer as a kid. No, no, I never even seen a, And I told them that when, we was, when I was getting into the team that I never even seen a soccer field when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. When I seen a soccer ball, I thought it was a flat football. We used to shoot basketball with a soccer ball. Mm -hmm. Cause just cause it was a ball, right, you know what right, I'm right. saying? Mm -hmm. And we just thought like, man, why the ball flat? Mm -hmm. Why it won't bounce? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. we had no exposure to soccer mm -hmm. in the way I grew up. You know, so, but my my son different. He went to different type of schools, mm -hmm. right? So they had a soccer field in his school. Mm -hmm. And it's the sport he plays. So between going to um, practices and games, you know, I learned what the sport is. So when the opportunity, Presenting itself, I was familiar with it, with the sport. Mm -hmm. And being in D.C. all the time keep you in the White House. <laughs> Let the record show, Gotti, they found cocaine in the White House. And, you know. <laughs> oh, boy. I don't think they found it before you started going there. Nah, I'm not. Nah, <laughs> nah. <laughs> you pitching the Biden? Nah, nah, <laughs> pitching nah, the Hunter? Nah, I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> I just <laughs> messed with <laughs> <up here. laughs> you. I said, you pitching the Hunter? But you, nah. know, you, do, you do get invited to the White House a lot. Yeah, I went a yeah. couple times. Mm -hmm. I went a couple times. What's that like? I mean, um, you know, it's 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 a um, surreal moment. Again, I was just telling one of my partners, like, just coming from again, coming from where we come from, mm -hmm. we ain't never expect to be at the White House. You know what I'm saying? Period. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So to be actually walking through the White House, and, and and you know, I think that's just for me. I don't know what it is for other people, but that's an accomplishment within itself. You know what I mean? Because I feel like everything is like you're an example of a culture, right? You know what I mean? And I was like, pass knee deep in the streets. Like, you feel me? So I think that like, for the next young hustler, it, that's how I look at it. For the next young hustler, if you see me at the White House, and you if you really do your research, you know where I come from, mm -hmm. you could be at the White House. And you could be doing more than what I was doing at the White House. Because that's how I look at Jay and different people. You know what I'm saying? I look at them like, oh, you know what I'm saying? This, doing this, he doing that. So they give me inspiration that I can do it. You know what I'm saying? So I, I hope that you know, the other young hustle see it, it, it's something like that. How far removed do you feel like you are from the street? All the way. Because in the album, you talk, you you say some things, you know, yeah. I let people find it on <laughs> themselves, you know what I mean? But it feels like you still feel like you got some pressure on Nah, you. I'm all the way removed. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm all the way removed from the street, 1,000%. <laughs> I would hope so. Yeah. 2,000%. Yeah, 2,000%. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But I, I think, I think streets is not like an action. You know what I'm saying? I think it's a a, a, a way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Meaning, like, I don't think uh, there's a certain way of thinking 
would ever like leave my mindset. Meaning like, and that's just from like a protection standpoint or or uh, um, common sense standpoint or uh, um, street sense standpoint. Meaning like just knowing how to move, right? Mm-hmm. So I can stay behind three security guard gates or whatever. Mm-hmm. I still pull up to the house the same way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I still look. If I pull up, if it's that's too right. dark, I may not go in the house. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That, that's what I mean by street mentality. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I mean, like, it's a feel. You know what I mean? It's okay. still to the day where I pull up to the house sometimes and I just look and I keep going. I just don't feel it's safe to go in tonight. I go to the hotel room. Mm-hmm. But that's somebody, that's a trait I got from in the street. But, but do you still feel that way, though? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you mean? Yeah, but do you still feel that way? Like, yeah, now to this day? Yeah. You ain't got cameras in the house, you can't look at your phone? I got everything. That's what I'm saying. I got <laughs> cameras, I got 24 hour guards, I yeah. got. Animals, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I got every form of protection you can have, you know what I'm saying? And I still move like that. Damn, that's PTSD, bro. Yeah, Damn, that's exactly that yeah. Yeah. I was I was gonna ask with um with everything that's that's going on and, and you look at your your career and you look at your life and you I remember you putting out the record and you just do a shot out there f- for Angela Simmons and to see it three sixty and now that you're actually dating. What was that original conversation like? Was it a joke? Was it a, like what you mean? The original, like the first first conversation. Absolutely. Uh, the very first time I ever said anything to her was uh, it was after the song, and I just told her I was serious. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I seen her, and then it was like a joke, and I'm like, nah, like shit ain't funny. I'm serious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 Like, you know what I'm saying? Did like, she think it was serious? Like, she was like, like no play. joke. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what heard of? Yeah, that was the first thing I ever told her. First mm-hmm. time I ever seen. Did she take you serious when you told her? I that? think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think so. On the album, you say, uh, "I ain't never, I ain't never lost the crush. I'm Mr. Follow Up." Or yeah, something. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty consistent. <laughs> I'm pretty consistent. Is the record uh, is the one? Is that about her? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It was inspired by her for sure. You know what I'm saying? She was in the studio with me. When I actually like, you know, when I record, I, I come off the top on, right? Mm-hmm. So when I loaded the beat up and I was in the booth, like she was in the studio, one nobody in the studio, me, her, and somebody else, you know, that's what came out. Mm-hmm. Wow. How, yeah. how has it been to be so, so public? Because usually you have been very private about your private life, whether it's whoever you were dating or yeah. family members. So how is it to have your life on Front Street? It's has a, it di- been it, difficult? Yeah, it's different. I mean, I don't say it's difficult, but it's different. You know what I'm saying? It's different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People judge you too much, or is it always? I don't care about none of that, bro. Mm-hmm. Again, I come from where, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't think these type of, like, judgments and opinion, like, none of that can really hurt me. I come from, like, the worst already. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it ain't, it's just different. It's just different. And, and I think the reason why my, I was never public, it wasn't because of an issue with the people or nothing. You know what I'm saying? More like a safety thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Really More like, like you don't really want nobody to know who your family is. That's mm-hmm. right. You know what I mean? I think the difference is you already know who she is. You already know who I am. Mm-hmm. And you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You think you would get married? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you say she the one. You know what I mean? She is. You know what I'm saying? So we got we to gotta, we gotta see. It's, it's, yeah. it's about time, Gotti. It is. You that you listen, you that dude right now. You bossed up on a different level. Yeah. Ain't nothing like having that whole unit together. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, hopefully you, you marry, you can give me some pointers and some information about that, you know what I'm saying? I just got good at it. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just got good at it. Yeah. <laughs> After all these years. You give me some, um, give me some, um, what word I'm looking for? Some, some pointers. Knowledge. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah. know, uh, un- unfortunately, again, coming from where we come from, ain't a lot of our people ever That's done real. that. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't got nothing against it, you know what I'm saying? I'm mm-hmm. just saying like, we still come from where we come from and what we know, you know what I'm saying? So. We know love, we know loyalty. You know what I'm saying, and and um, but I, that's the end goal. I can you say I can say being married and actually doing right by my wife. You know, on color purple when Celie pointed you and Celie said, "Ain't no good gonna come to you till you do right by me." Yeah. When you do right by your wife, absolutely, your life just man. You think you're doing it now? Oh my yeah. god, absolutely. Just everything, everything elevates. I respect that. I agree. Everything I elevates. That. Have you had a conversation with Run? Um. Kinda, kinda, yeah, cause yeah. It, got, it still got to be awkward yeah, though. But it's because yeah, does he does he put his you know his arm around you? Be like, look, young man. Uh, I got I, I got to sit down with him. Mm. Yeah, so okay, yeah, it's lined up though. All right, yeah, oh, I love to man. see that. That means it's about to get serious. 
I respect. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the song "No Fake Love," man. Do you feel like uh, do you feel like all love is fake for real? Not all, but a lot of it, mm -hmm. most of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cause I think we're in an opportunist world. So I feel like you know, people love you for what you could do for them. Mm -hmm. And once you stop doing it, or once you can't do it, you will see that soon. Mm -hmm. That it's a different relationship, a different type of relationship. Whether y'all hustling together, whether y'all just friends. You know, in a lot of situations, you know what I'm saying, uh, people confuse love and opportunity. Mm -hmm. What do you think um, when you have an artist, right? Because you've had so much success with, with different artists. If one of the artists don't take off, what's that conversation like? We try. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I tell all my artists this from the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Like, if we, we can win together, we can lose together. Like if I can go to the bank with you, I can, I can lose with you too. I ain't tripping. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? As long as we both try our best to do what we thought we'd win. You know what I mean? And you win some, you lose some. You know what I'm saying? Like I ain't tripping. How do you know, how you know when it's time to move on though from an artist? Uh, well, most time, most time I only I only move on if like we ain't like See, on the eye. same page. Yeah. It ain't really a monetary standpoint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because we can figure out how to adjust the numbers to keep getting the artist shots. Mm -hmm. And it still makes sense. So we not, you know, you're not losing too much. Mm -hmm. You feel me? As long as I feel like we still in it together and we still trying together, you know what I'm saying? That if if we ain't on the same page, we just, we just wasting each other's time. Do you look at artists as ever being uh, a little lazy uh, because of the social media era? They got a lot of things that you didn't have, right? So I, I remember seeing you come up and th the things that you had to do, whether it was going to every homecoming, all-star event, Super Bowl, where you would travel with all your cars to make it a yeah. movie. Like, I remember seeing that and then seeing the grind. I talk about this all the time with my partner and them. They're like, it's, it's just a different era. Like, what we done, what we done to promote and what we done to get in position, I just don't think new artists today could even do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I remember I used to go to New Orleans to holler at Birdman and them. We used to wait 10 hours just to talk to them. That's right. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, imagine if you tell an artist come meet you today and it take take you 10 hours to talk to them. They're going to feel disrespect. They're going to get on, they gonna they gonna get on social Instagram media. and talk shit. Yeah. Gotti this, Gotti of that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm nah, saying? They're going to feel disrespect. They're like, man, I'm going to wait 30 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we would go to a video shoot and be there all day to be in a two second cameo. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We ain't have no trailer, no budget, styling budget again. Mm -hmm. Man, invite an artist to the video and he, he, he ain't ready to shoot him when he pull up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he feel different, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's just it's just a different, like, you know what I mean? So, but I also think those things that, those are things that make people like me, like, stronger mm -hmm. on a different level. Like, I can take more, I can, like, I'm not bothered easily. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not really, like, mm -hmm. I ain't phased by nothing. I already done it the hardest way you can do it. Mm -hmm. I've already been through the, the you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, so like everything is like, what's well, something serious to somebody is like, it's a joke to be up tripping off of it. Like, mm -hmm. you mad at that? You mad at it? Yeah, like, yeah, you yeah, offended yeah. by that? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. what, what, what's Young D done that made you be like, come on, bro? Young D ain't done nothing, bro. Young D, like, you cool? Yeah, Young D, like, just getting started and he on to a great start. You know what I'm saying? He done like, Doug record, Maybach with Future, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of money bag records mm -hmm. at, at an early age. So I think he kind of ahead of his time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think he creating a sound that's probably gonna be like this CMG sound for the next, you know, next wave. You mm -hmm. got your first hundred bands yet, uh, D? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Did it feel like a million? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. That's what that's what Gotti said on the the, the first hundred bands. His first hundred bands felt like a million. So what did a million feel like then, Gotti? Man, you know it's crazy because it's like I mean y'all 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 niggas got a lot of money, man. Y'all know, know how it's going. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's like you know uh, when you first get that first hundred, that hundred in the hood, mm -hmm. you you like a millionaire in the hood. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then in Memphis, you know you might you might be one point five in Memphis <laughs> with a hundred. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like it's, it's, uh, that's how it feel. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? When when you get it the first time, it's a, it's a special feeling. And I think, you know, it's crazy that I think we all, from a culture, just wanted to be a millionaire at some point. Mm -hmm. Because it, that seemed like the end goal. Like, man, if I can become a millionaire, that was it, right? Until you get the million. 
then you realize like, oh man. I you need know, more. Yeah, like this ain't, this ain't what I thought it yeah. was. Like, <laughs> you feel me? Yeah, like, yeah. I need a lot more of these, yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? So um, I just think it's, it's, um, it's, it's different uh, tempos you hit. Like mm-hmm. I think the honey band, the first honey band is special. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? In the street, really, too. I, I think it's also different. I, I don't know this, but I think if you got a $100,000 job, it may not feel the same at the $100,000, 5s, 10s, and 20s mm-hmm. in your hand in the street, like what I'm referencing to. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Because that's what I think. You know what I mean? I never had a six figure job, you mm-hmm. know, like they paid. Because if you get hundred thousand a year at a job, that's yeah. really like fifty, sixty, depending 60, on where you live at. Sixty-five thousand, you never seeing all that yeah. money at yeah. once. Yeah. Minus yeah. taxes. So that first yeah. hundred bands and five, tens, and twenties, and it looked good, and you got it. You know how you got it stacked up, whether it's in ten thousand dollar stacks or one thousand dollar stacks. You, you know what I'm saying? Mm. You know, I can't wait to feel. I, man. We used to, <laughs> man, we used to earn the. I used to earn my money, put the small bills over here, and you know, you feel mm-hmm. me? So I can't wait to get a hundred thousand. Oh man, you, you ain't got a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand time. Go <laughs> 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 you know on, man. What, you, what, what are you learning from Hove at this point in the game? Because on the album, you say you feel like you right there with Hove. Yeah, I said. Uh, what did I say? I you said, said you, uh, you feel like you right there with I'm Hove. Rap, not, I'm your rapper's favorite rapper, something like that. Uh, I'm damn known J level. Yeah, but not literally. You said. Yeah, but then yeah. I, I make sure I tell you not literally because that's that's, <laughs> yeah. that's a different level. You that's know a what billion saying? billion conversation. Yeah, but. Uh, you know, I, I say that in a, um, what I'm learning for Jay now is I think it's about, and this is my opinion, I think everything mm-hmm. with Jay Rock Nation is about impact at this point. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I feel like, of course, they are all the money in the world, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think for me, too, it's like trying to see how much impact can you give. You know what I'm saying? Whether this happened to Young D or this happened to another artist or mm-hmm. whether this creating jobs mm-hmm. in the city or whether this... Uh, just you know, helping somebody with information. You know, I do a lot of that. That's I don't even, that, that probably will never be public. You know what I mean? It's so many artists that's not signed to me that I get nothing off of mm-hmm. that I talk to every week. Different artists that I just you know get information to, give advice to, help them with different situations. You know what I'm saying? Or uh, try to help them go to the next level that I have no financial interest in. Or uh, just impact. I think everything is information. I. I I take in a lot of information, mm-hmm. but I also give that information back out. You know what I mean? So I think I'm just at a point where I'm trying to figure out how much impact I can, I can, how many things I can touch, how much impact I can leave in the legacy. Mm-hmm. I, I can't, I can't think of no artist who's got a better roster of artists <laughs> right now. I can't, I, I'm, I can't think of it. Mm-mm. You know, we've seen different people have different rosters at certain times. I'm talking about right now, right now? in this moment. Yeah, I, I can't think of nobody who got CMG. Mm-mm. Yeah, uh, we bless. Is, is it true? They always say that in Memphis, uh, if it ain't CMG, if, if if you if you're not with CMG, it's not gonna not gonna work for you. No, nah, that's not true. Okay, there's a lot of artists that's not CMG from Memphis that work. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And uh, we like them too. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you know, there's a lot of up. There's a lot of young cats right now that's mm-hmm. killing it. You know, you know what I'm saying? Who I think they're killing on the street already. Who I think they're gonna be the next wave, and they sign the different people. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, nah, yes. Yeah, Did you give them information? Do you give like that? Those other labels? Anybody, bro. Anybody uh, who hit me, like I'm an open book. I'm mm-hmm. an open book. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I ain't hard to reach, so anybody could uh, get information from me. Do you want new artists? Do you want more people? Um, uh, the right ones. Mm-hmm. Or- the right one. We got we got a lot going on mm-hmm. right now. So you got uh, a bunch of artists. So we can't mm-hmm. afford to be like if you ain't really like serious. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If you ain't serious about hustling, we ain't we ain't trying to get no quick check or no just. Mm-hmm. Do you remember all your you artists? Oh, you remember all the artists you got signed? Glorilla, Moneybag, Yo, ESTG, yeah. Four Two Doug, Black Youngster. What, what what all the artists you have? Anybody we forgetting? Uh, Big Boogie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Layla. Jesus Christ! I forgot Big Boogie was signed. Yeah, pop off. Big, Big mm-hmm. Boogie popping off. Mm-hmm. What's up with Youngster, uh, man? What uh, you up to? I just was on the phone with Youngster a minute ago. He good. Mm-hmm. Youngster a businessman, bro. He like he actually work on a lot of other stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of real estate stuff, a lot of different different hustles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, look, Lil Papa, we, we we got Lil Papa. Lil Papa. From Jacksonville, Florida. Jesus uh we work with Mozzie. Mozzie, of course. Mozzie from the West Coast. Oh, yeah, I ain't know Mozzie was CMG. Yeah. I ain't know that. We mm-hmm. rock with Mozzie. Mm-hmm. Uh uh. 
man. It's a lot. Of feeling. You need somebody yeah. from the Carolinas, man. You need somebody from South Carolina. Well, you know, we uh, we looking. Oh, you got okay, okay. We looking. Who? We looking. Nah, I can't say that. They right. might grab. <laughs> they Tell me might, off here. They me might off grab here. them before us. <laughs> Tell me <laughs> off here. But Carol, I, we want to work with somebody from Carolina, New York. Mm-hmm. We want to work with somebody from New York, Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or, them certain markets we always wanted to like find the right artists in. Mm-hmm. Cause you know the South Carolina guy always had big love for you. You know, yeah, what I mean? South Carolina like a big part of our like like our success mm-hmm. for real. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like if you if you took the Carolinas out of the picture, man, you'd take a lot of high paper. <laughs> you don't realize saying? that no. You take a lot of high paper out the out the um. What are, we, what are you talking about? Show money? We talking about record sales, streams? Mm-hmm. A lot of it comes from the Carolinas. Because uh, Ar- Arnold Taylor was a big part of your success yeah, early on. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. my dog. It's my dog. It's my dog for sure. All right. All right. Well, the album, while well, I said it, Gangsta Grills mixtape, I showed, I you, showed you so. Soul. You can pick it up now. Young D, we appreciate you for joining us. Appreciate that yeah. for having me, too. And of course, Yo Gotti. Thank you, brother. For sure. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.